Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is our lesson 14 part 2 session. So in my previous session, lesson 14 part 1, I have covered a topic dynamic comparison. So I recommend you people to go through that particular part 1 video before you watch this part 2 video. Okay, so in this part 2 session, I'm going to cover uh, topics like parent control and dynamic ID. Please subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon so that you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos on Tasca and other technologies. Okay, so let me quickly walk through uh, the agenda item that we have covered as part of uh, part one video session basically the video session 14 part 1 okay so in this in that particular video session i have covered a dynamic comparison okay where you were able to set a dynamic comparison to exclude and buffer part of a string so basically when you complete your order process and once you complete the payment so your order confirmation will be appearing on the confirmation page where it displays a message called order number colon and the order number. So that order number is a dynamic value, correct? What we did is we excluded that dynamic value from the confirmation message and we have stored that dynamic order number value into a buffer called order number as you are seeing on the screen. If you see the syntax where what we did is inner text of that particular message equal to order number colon space that means we are asking to verify this the first part of static text order number colon space correct and the remaining part where the order number gets generated which is dynamic value so what we are doing we are excluding that part while verifying the message and also while exclude along with the excluding the order number we are storing that number into a buffer called order number so this will be very useful in this session so because we'll be you reusing that stored order number for this particular session while covering the parent control and the dynamic id Okay, so let's go to our actual agenda item, parent control and dynamic ID. Okay, so our actual agenda item for this session is parent control and dynamic ID. So main objective of this session, by the end of this exercise, you will be able to use XCAN to create a module with controls that have been identified by a parent as well as use XCAN to create a module with a dynamic ID. What does it mean? So basically let's assume on your screen you have a, a link called detail. Okay. So that link is repeated for every order for example and when you go to the history of the order there will be a detail button correct for every order. Correct. So that means on page there is a duplicate values. Basically there are multiple buttons with the same name. So in this case you cannot identify the object as a unique object. What we can do? So there is an option called a parent control. That means you can consider a property of a parent so that the detail button can be identified as a as a unique button so that's the reason we'll be using a parent control and dynamic id so dynamic id means if an object property is a dynamic in nature and if you use that particular pro property to identify an object so that dynamic property cannot be used all you need to do is you need to use a logic to use the dynamic ID as a property. Okay. So when I walk you through the actual example by using Tosca, you will be able to clearly understand this concept. Okay. So now let us 
go through the example and see what does parent control and dynamic id means okay so once you complete this exercise you will be able to use the parent control and dynamic id by yourself okay so let me go through a scenario that we will be considering to explain the parent control and the dynamic id okay so i mean if you follow my previous videos clearly you know this demo web shop okay we were working on this demo web shop uh, from past 13 sessions correct so here once you order a blue jeans okay once you come to the uh, cart and then you will be uh, agreeing to the terms and services and click on checkout and then what we'll do we generally go to the uh, basically we provide billing address and shipping address and you are going to select shipping method and payment method and then payment information and we will be confirming the order correct so as soon as you confirm the order right so in my part one session i have showed you how can we compare this dynamic id right so this order number is dynamic in nature and then we compared this particular dynamic id correct so now if once i order this particular item if i would if i would like to reorder the same item again based on this order number what should i do i have to go to my account and then click on orders if you see here in this page my last order is this and if you see here if i would like to click on detail button here on this page i can see there are multiple detail buttons available on the screen that means you cannot identify this control as a unique control unless you consider a parent control called the order number that means i would like to click on this detail button where the order number is showing as 817241 and once i click on details then i would like to click on reorder basically i would like to reorder the same item with the order number 817241 correct and then you will be clicking on reorder and again will be checking this i agree with terms and conditions check out and then continue your billing shipping method and your payment method and then i'm going to click on confirm that means uh, in this scenario what we are doing we are ordering a product and once i order a product i am going to my account and then i am retrieving my orders history and then i would like to click on one detail button which basically this detail button can be uniquely identified by using order number parent control so that means i would like to click on detail button equivalent to a particular order number and then again reorder the product and complete entire payment method correct so that's that is our new scenario okay that we are going to consider in this particular session so that i can use my parent control and the dynamic id okay so now let us automate this scenario whatever i explained to you guys okay by using tosca tool okay so this is my tosca tool and if you see here the 14 dynamic comparison this is our part 1 uh, session that what we did okay so let me rename this as part 1 okay so now what i am doing i have created another folder a new folder called 14 dynamic comparison part 2 okay so now what i am going to do i would like to reuse basically i would like to use the reusable test blocks that we have identified in my previous sessions okay so for that first i would like to drag my precondition reusable test block sorry before that i would like to create a test case correct so right click and click on test case dynamic 
let me do one thing parent control okay parent control and dynamic id okay so let's my precondition i would like to reuse this test plot block as as it is and then once precondition is done i'm going to order the product correct so i would like to reuse the same test step block and then once i order the product i would like to start checkout process so i'm reusing the same test step block here and then another reusable test step block uh, is verification process so once we start checkout and then we will use checkout process so where is our checkout process this one is our checkout process drag and drop here so once you check out we are going to verify the prices for that let me create a new folder verify prices verify verification of prices okay verification okay verification of prices this is a new folder because we have we never identified this as a reusable component okay and then after that it's a confirmation so once you verify the uh, sorry verify verif verify the prices then we are going to verify verification of the success okay once sorry i think verification of verification once we complete the verification process and then confirmation so this is my confirmation and then once the confirmation is done and then i'm going to verification of the success right so once you click on confirmation you are going to get the success message right so i'm verifying the success message and then if you follow my previous session correct so once we complete verification of the prices and then confirmation what we did verification of the success done after that what we did in success page the order number will be generated what we did we have actually buffered that particular order number by using this syntax if you remember my previous video okay so what i would like to do i would like to basically reuse this folder as it is okay just copy this and then i would like to paste it here okay so that means i'm buffering so once i receive a confirmation with order number i'm comparing that order number success message and i'm also buffering that order number basically i am storing that order number into a buffer called order number and then i'm comparing the static text order number colon space so as i explained you in my previous session okay so once that is done what we are going to do i would like to basically previous orders i would like to go to the previous orders right as i explained you what we are going to do to go to the previous orders i'll be clicking on this and then click on orders so that process we are going to do now okay for that let me create a new folder called previous orders previous orders so once i'm done with previous orders and then i'm going to do a reorder correct so for that i think i have created in a wrong okay let me create here under test case i have to create create previous orders and once i click on previous orders what i'm going to do I have to click on reorder correct okay for that i need to basically click on detail and then reorder so that means i have to create another folder called reorder okay once i click on reorder what i will do i will again once i click on reorder i will again start my checkout process correct so that means i have to again drag and drop my checkout process let me let me again go to the library okay again you will be 
dragging and dropping my checkout process. Once I check out, what I'm going to do again, it's again we are repeating the same process, correct? Even though after reorder. And then once I do the checkout process, sorry, before checkout process, I have to do my start checkout, correct? After reorder, I have to do start checkout. Drag and drop by start checkout. But I would like to arrange this in chronological order. Okay. Start checkout. Checkout process. And then verification of prices. So that means verification of prices. Again, I have to create a new folder here. Okay. Just create a new folder. Verification of prices. Right. Verification of price. Not prices. Let's say prices. Okay. Verification of the prices. And then here also I would like, I'm just uh, correcting my spelling. Okay. After verification of the prices, again, it comes as confirmation. Right. Just drag the reusable tested block again. So once the confirmation is done, and then I'm going to verify the success message. Verify verification of success. And after that, we'll be logging out. So for that, we have created a reusable block called post condition. Drag and drop here. Okay, so that means now our entire scenario is ready for her, for us. Now, see whatever reusable test step blocks, we need not to worry about these reusable test step blocks. All we need to do is fill up these new steps that we have created for the new scenario. Okay, first one is verification of prices. So verification of prices, I would like to follow the same way what I did in my previous session, probably session three or session four. At the beginning, I have told you how do we verify the prices, correct? So I would like to copy the same steps here because I don't want to uh, basically invest time here again to explain the same thing, okay? So whatever we did in our previous session, I would like to do a same thing here as well, okay? So let me just, not here, so let me see from where I would like to take. I would like to take from the lesson 9. Okay. If you see the lesson 9, we have the verification. We are verifying the shipping. We are verifying subtotal. So this is enough for me. So for that, I would like to copy this verification of the prices test case and then paste it here. Paste. Because there is no change. I would like to use same as it is. Okay. I'm just making sure everything got pasted. Now, see buffering order, that means once you come to, once your order is completed, I'm storing the order number into a buffer along with the comparison, okay, which I already explained in my previous session. Now, I have to fill up this one. What is this? This is my previous orders. To go to the previous orders, what I have to do, I have to select a top menu and then I have to navigate to my account, correct? So that's the reason I would like to add here, come here. I would like to add module called a top menu. Okay. Click on add step and then top menu. Just take the top menu. And then once you click on top menu, what we are going to do? We are going to select these orders. Correct. So for that, I have to add a my account menu. So this menu is my account menu. Correct. So I already added that module. I'm just calling that module. Okay. My account menu. So once I add, once I come to my account menu, I'm going to click on orders. So once I click on orders, I have to basically click on a detail button of corresponding order where we have stored the order number in my previous step. Correct. So now, Based on this order number, I would like to click on the corresponding detail button. Okay. So for that, first what we need to do is we have to capture these values. Basically, we have to capture these controls. Correct. So let me go for that. We will go back to modules. Okay. And then once you go back to module, just navigate to my account. Under my account, there is an empty folder called 11B order pages. So you need to right click on this folder and then click on scan and select 
application. So once you select application, it's going to ask you to select the required application on desktop. Okay, so we'll be selecting web shop. So here, let me select web shop and then click on scan. So as soon as you click on scan, so now you can, you'll be able to select the controls on the screen. So what I need to do is use select on screen. First, I would like to capture this entire div container under div container. I have order number. I have basically order total and also I have a details. Correct. So that's why I would like to capture this entire container div container. So click on this. So div container is added. Now I would like to capture order total. And I would like to capture the detail button. So once it is done, just unselect the select on screen. Now we need to uniquely identify these objects. Correct. First, this div container can be uniquely identified by using class name and then outer text. And then li is also not uniquely identified. If you see, this is not uniquely identified. So you should be able to uniquely identify order total by using outer text. I think that's it. Now you need to rename this as order info, this container. And this is my order total. And this control is a detail button. So I can keep as it is. And then let me rename this entire model, uh, sorry, module as order overview. Basically, I'm storing all these controls into a module called order overview. Okay. And then click on save button and click on close. So if you go back to Tasca, if you see the new module called order over you is got created. Right. So if you see here under this new module, order info, order to and detail, correct. So now what we need to do is here we have to use the dynamic ID. How? If you expand this properties, right? Properties pane. If you see here this order info container, this order info container, correct? I would like to consider which container? I have to consider a container which has the order number as my previous order where I have stored as a buffer, correct? So first I have to select that container and then click on corresponding detail. Hence, if you go back to the modules, this order info container, if you see the property outer text here, right? It has order number, colon, space, and this entire text you have, right? So what I need to do here, instead of this text, I would like to delete this entire text. And then I would like to replace this with the buffer what I stored earlier, which is order number, sorry, order number and close curly braces and star. So that means what I'm saying, my outer text, I'm asking, I mean, I'm directing Tosca to check for the order info, which has the order number as the stored value as per my previous order. So pre previous order number I'm already storing in a buffer. So I'm calling the same buffer here and then I'm using wildcard wildcard called star. So this is the way you can use the dynamic ID for a given control. Right. So once that is done, save these changes and then go back to test case now. So if you see here, we are actually here previous order, right? In the previous order, what we did is we have added top menu and then we have added my uh, my account menu and here I would like to so once you go to my account menu and then you will be clicking on orders here I would like to 
click on detail button for that i have to add another module just now what we created the new module whatever we created order overview you have to call that okay for that you just right click and then add step order overview that we have just now added right just select that so here now if you see here now what i would like to do here first i go to top menu by selecting by selecting my account so that means i would like to see here my account i would like to click on this particular link and then i would like to click on orders right i would like to click on orders once i click on this and then i would like to click on orders so that's why i'm selecting orders and then here under order overview if you see i would like to click on a detail i already set up the container property as a previous order number correct so that's why now i can directly select my detail button that's it that is done so after that what about reorder so this is another folder where we'll be performing reorder so for the reorder you need to call order details here okay let me just right click add a module called order details right i have ordered where i have a button called reorder button so once i do do this i'm going to click on reorder so here i would like to click on this reorder button so once that is done and then again check out process will start correct so now we have completed so let me see okay verification of the prices again i would like to copy this same test case and then paste it here because verification of prices is same right so now if you see we have completed this entire scenario automation in just 10 minutes correct so now you can just directly run this particular test case by right click and click on run in scratch so as soon as you click on run in scratch so your run will be successful and then you have to uh, change the work state as completed hope you all understand very important concept of dynamic comparison parent control and then dynamic id please click on bell icon subscribe to the channel you will receive notifications whenever i publish more videos on tasca concepts and other technologies thank you